Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and you're tuned in to Madden 18 on EA Sports. We've got a good one on tap today, and there's going to be two quarterbacks ready to get it done on the gridiron. It's Stafford's Lions going up against Rodgers Packers. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Here at the oldest continually operating stadium in the NFL as you get a look inside Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. We all know this community lives for its Packers, and the green and gold came out of the tunnel a short time ago, and it was loud. We are ready for football. So are they as the Packers get set to match up with Matthew Stafford and the Detroit Lions. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. They'll be led out by the ninth-year man out of Georgia, their quarterback, and that's Matthew Stafford. The arm has always been evident. The maturity has really increased in the last couple of seasons. How about 2016 for Matthew Stafford? Eight game-winning drives in the fourth quarter or overtime, the most by a quarterback in a single season in the Super Bowl era. In fact, one Detroit newspaper put the odds of all those comebacks occurring at 8.65 billion <laughs> to one. It's crazy, 8.65 billion to one. I don't know that lightning will strike twice, but what a season. On first down, Stafford here. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down, Golden Tate, his intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. And now the offense for Detroit. With Matthew Stafford at quarterback and Marvin Jones and Golden Tate at wide receiver, we know that Detroit is proficient at throwing the football. But they want to increase their running game production. Only 30th in the league in 2016. They went out and signed offensive guard T.J. Lang and right tackle Ricky Wagner in order to try and get the running game going. On second and ten, Stafford. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And let's get a look at the Green Bay defense. Green Bay's defense in 2016 was a bit unbalanced. Number eight against the run, but number 31 against the pass. So you know the off-season emphasis is on trying to make sure they shored up the secondary and increase the pass rush. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. Now Stafford. This is Riddick on the screen. And he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. So here we go, first and 10 now. A first carry for Amir Abdullah. And he picks up about six as he gets this down to the 41. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Eight. 
from the gun. Here's Stafford. And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield stripe. Jake Ryan in there to drop him. And it'll be a loss of about eight. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. After the sack, Stafford and the Lions come up on a third and long situation. From the 50 at Stafford. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. And partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? In his fifth year from Appalachian State, it's Sam Martin on to punt. Trevor Davis, deep for Green Bay. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Well, Charles Davis, you broadcasted the Green Bay New Orleans game this last week. So as the Packers come out, led by Brett Hundley, what did you see from him? I saw some flashes, saw the reason why he was the number two quarterback in Green Bay. You saw the talent that he brought with him from UCLA when he was drafted in the fifth round 2015. Scored a touchdown with his legs on a 14-yard run. But getting the ball downfield, that was a struggle for him because the top receivers for Green Bay, they didn't touch it enough. Jordy Nelson, Devontae Adams, Randall Cobb, just five receptions among them. Here's the rookie from UTEP, Aaron Jones. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. And now the offensive starters for the Packers. Ty Montgomery's move to running back was almost out of necessity, but I thought he got better with each passing game. Became more confident as a runner, stronger as a runner, broke more tackles as the year went on, and also kept his ability to catch the football out of the backfield. Second down following the run. They'll go again to Jones. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. It's a four-yard pick up there, and it leaves him with third and five. And the starting crew defensively for Detroit. Detroit's numbers on defense in 2016 were not horrible. They were number 19 against the pass and number 18 overall. But where they think they'll make a big jump in 2017 is being able to get a pass rush going again. Ziggy Ansah, their star defensive end, played with a bad ankle for most of the season and wasn't able to duplicate his double-digit sack numbers of 2015. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Come on, let's go! Grand 38! Ah. Now Hundley. It's caught! Nelson! And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Seven yards there. Good enough to move the sticks. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle it, and they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where Every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, 
as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. Here we go. One, From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Over the middle, that's caught by Adams. And he's brought down. 12 more yards there and another first down. I know Devontae Adams really developed in 2016 as a receiver for Green Bay. I think he had plenty of incentive because when Aaron Rodgers breaks contain, gets out of the pocket, anything can happen downfield. You can find yourself open, can't you? And it makes Adams a high-volume guy. Week 7 and 8 last year, 25 catches. Highest two-game total in the illustrious history of the Packers. Throwing Hundley to the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. A gain of four on the play, and that'll make this a second down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike, he's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. <laughs> on second down, it's Jones. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. It's a loss of four. Now third down. The Lions gave up 177 rushing yards to Seattle in their playoff loss last year. And DeAndre Levy, their best inside linebacker, no longer with the team. That made Jared Davis out of Florida a really good selection for the Lions. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Let's go! He'll look to throw. Complete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Now on to kick it away, the rookie from Miami, Justin Vogel, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. So the Lions offense ready to go back out onto the field. The last couple of drives have ended in punts. Maybe the crowd minds that, but you're a defensive guy. You're okay with a couple of punt drives. Listen, I'm the guy that loves a 0-0 pitch game All right, in baseball. I can handle that going into the seventh inning. I think the crowd, though, they want to see a little bit more excitement. Let's see if someone can break something free on offense and get going. Offense at a premium the last two drives. <laughs> Stafford on first down. And he's going to be out of bounds up around the 45-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. First and ten, Stafford. He goes underneath to Abdullah. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, Hey, we got a bike. Oh, he just snuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. Fresh set of downs here. Hey, lady. 
Here's Stafford. Ebron caught left side. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Eric Ebron's got skills to spare. They just want the production to equal those, and he needs some good health in order to get that done. Had 61 catches in 2016, battling an ankle. Yeah, the surprise, though, just one of those 61 hit pay dirt. Pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Just beating the play clock. Stafford. To the right side to Eric Ebron. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. That's a good chunk of yardage. It's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books, but now they have to make that up again, don't they? of Clay Matthews as a player it's just one that they, they're going to end up writing books about. He didn't even start until his senior year at USC. He didn't start in high school. And now he's at all pro level in the NFL. How about the play he just made there? Yeah, he has certainly made a name for himself. William Clay Matthews III. First and second down were a disaster. Both went backwards. Now it's third and 18. They need something big. From the 50, Stafford. It's caught inside the 25. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A gain of 26 on the third down conversion. Great patience in the pocket. Of course, it's easy to be patient when the protection's good, and it was. Yeah, you've got to pat those guys on the helmet and say thanks because they gave him plenty of time to stay back there, survey the field, go through the reads that he wanted to, and deliver the ball accurately. That was really well executed. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Stafford gives to Abdullah on the draw. Whoosh. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Back-to-back -back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. I know it's a cliche, and coaches always talk about it's a team game. We need all 11 to win. But let's face it, Detroit really needs Amir Abdullah to have runs like that all season long. Missed a lot of time with injuries, especially recently. Now, Theo Riddick wound up leading the Lions in rushing last year with just 357 yards. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Throwing a Stafford. And his throw here is incomplete. He was trying to find Marvin Jones that time. And it's second down. Quarterback in 101. Never force the ball into double coverage, especially not this close to the goal line. The windows are so tight, you just don't want to force it in there because it could be tipped up and picked off. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Oh. 
So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Now the Notre Dame man, this is Theo Riddick. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. Theo Riddick taking it in from two yards out. And the Lions are going to take a first quarter lead. And there you go. Nothing really too complex. Block, keep to your assignments. Let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking. Beats good tackling on that play. And result, touchdown. Footing likely going to be an issue all night here on a rainy night, but this one is good. So that drive consumes nine plays all told, and it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. Martin, the putter now, out to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And you know, their previous possession, they were able to move the football, but still wound up punting in the end. You know, in 2016, Carolina had a 20-play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes. And remember how it ended? In a punt. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? You just don't see that happen every day. And this one maybe not quite that bad, but still, you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long. Agreed. Come on, let's go! They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. Shifty footwork gets him a little extra on the play. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Again, it's Jones. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going, and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. Come on, let's go! Right, right, right. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it at every position, and we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. And not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. And before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. 7-0 is our score. We're back to Lambeau in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Packers in possession of the football. But they face a second and long to start things out. Go, go. 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. Nine good yards there on the run, and now third down. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. They'll set up to throw. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. They came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. On now is the Packers punter, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And now a high kick trying to pin him back. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. So out now come the Lions. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. It doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. here back to his own 18 it's a loss of two there bringing up second down when you think of Mike Daniels you think of strength hard to knock off the football but surprising quickness and ability to move and evade people how about that play there well he can squat 600 pounds so that's how he caught people's attention coming into the league and he caught our attention right there way up near the 25 so they get half of what they needed it'll be third and six upcoming Kid had a ton of success here so far but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one yeah even on that one there was a little bit of a hole but it closed there quickly at the end the lions on third down they've been okay two for three thus far this will be third and six now it's stanford now they set up the screen that's complete and a big tackle there as the defender runs right through him. He loses five full yards to bring up four. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, ran to it, and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. Here's Sam Martin now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away. And boy, it's another boomer. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now, not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? They'll start out on the ground with Jones. And he'll rumble for about five, up close to the 40. Well, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football first down, 
I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. to throw. That's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. to Jones and he's brought down a really nice pickup of 14 yards and it moves the sticks and they really needed to get something going didn't they they had punted on the last two possessions the running game starting to come to the front for them providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going Play fake here on first down. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. But it looked like a Packer. Yeah, a Packer was able to get this back, and they'll indeed keep possession. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. it across midfield to the 45. They don't get it all back there, but they do get eight, and it sets up a third and 15. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him, so when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. The Packers on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and 15. Now whistles here, flag down. I think one of the Packer linemen was moving. And that'll set him back five. Still third down. The Packers on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and a mile. Here we go. Brad 38. Brad 38. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. The left side throw complete to Adams. 14 yards is the pick up there, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Now Mason Crosby for the Packers field goal try. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. And this is good. It was running out of gas there at the end, but he winds up getting just enough on it. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. A little bit of a lower trajectory there on the deep kick, and it worked. Had to do it because he had to drive it out low because of the length of the kick. 
able to do that, got it above the defense and over the post. After the made field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. All right, let's discuss Amir Abdullah. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. They start the drive with Abdullah. Even with the nice move, can't go very far. Stop short of the 30. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Tough running there. That's a hard earn four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Again, it's Abdullah. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice gain. Now a first down throw, Stafford. And Jones has it over the middle. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. A gain of six there on first. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who could turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. A second down run for Abdullah. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. And that's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. And partner, in a lot of short yardage situations, you'll see the linebackers step up into the gaps, what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, to make sure they take away all spaces, all creases. That one worked really well for them. They only needed a yard, instead went backwards. Here's Sam Martin now, as he's on to punt for Detroit. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. That'll go for only 17 yards on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading onto the field again. And the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so, because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield, get the ball in his hands in open space. 
and just don't get totally away from running it because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes along. Yeah, they've been good with the run so far. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And the Lions pressure too strong. Down he goes. Jared Davis, the rookie from Florida. And it'll make this a second and long. Well, that was an interesting little chess match there because the offense went empty set. No running backs in the backfield. So they're trying to get people out into a route pretty quickly. But guess what? The defense sees that. They go ahead and move, it, move themselves into a blitzing situation and come right after the quarterback. They had more guys there than they could block. to throw here and complete on the right side to Bennett and they'll take him down at the 31 yard line six yards is the pickup and that'll lead to a third down have you gotten used to seeing Martellus Bennett number 80 <laughs> I mean he's been number 88 his entire career right and how about that the fans selecting his jersey number yeah that was his idea he put that out there on social media and said here here are a few choices what should I wear and he went with what the fans picked over 100,000 people weighed in He'll look to throw. They're looking deep for Adams. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. Give him 30 yards there. I know you're trying not to scoreboard watch, but you only got three points. You're kind of hoping that that type of play there gives you some positive momentum going into the half. Yeah, need to do something to get more than that three number that they have on the scoreboard right now. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to Lambeau following these words. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Larry Ridley will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Now the offense lining up first and ten. They're going to look to throw. And he's got his man on the out route. And he gets it down to the 32. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. to throw. Oh, he's got a little daylight. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. So the offense has it first and 10. Looking to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 10 more there and another first down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy.
Now whistles here, flag down. I think one of the Packer linemen was moving. And yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still first down. And here comes play number six on this drive. Now Hundley. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone and it brings up second down. just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. The Packers on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and seven. Let's go! Cut. They'll look to throw. Oh, it's a touchdown if he holds on. Instead, it's fourth down. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion. Force him into going for three and not giving up six. Now Mason Crosby for the Packers field goal try. From the left half should be a fairly easy one here. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goal post. And they'll get it back within a point at seven to six. So the drive takes him inside the 10, but it ends with just three. And a nice job defensively to rise up and make sure they didn't get in. To the main field goal. Now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's only had a couple of carries. I mean, when you've got a horse like this, second quarter, got to start to ride that horse a little more, don't you? You can't just neglect him. He's got to touch it and often in order to get maximum out of him. Typically, these types of backs, it's the accumulation of carries, and that's when you see the damage as the game goes on. Yeah, let's see. They're going to try to get him into the flow, we would assume, here. <laughs> on first down, Stafford here. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Now, that incompletion gives me a chance to go in a different direction. You know, a few teams we've been talking about in the NFL that have had offensive explosions this year after struggles in the past, and one you mentioned, the Chiefs. Yeah, think about it. Kareem Hunt, the rookie out of Toledo, has been phenomenal at tailback. 
but Alex Smith has opened it up on offense. I'm sure the drafting of Pat Mahomes had nothing to do at all <laughs> with Alex Smith now becoming a bomber downfield. And then the Saints, we talked about them nearly every week. What they've done, it's kind of a flip-flop of what we've seen in recent years. Well, you start with the obligatory Drew Brees is great, and he still is, but they're running the ball more. It's the defense has been the, been the issue for them that now is actually carrying them. This four-game winning streak has been all about the defense. Plenty of takeaways and a lot of sacks. And then the Rams. Oh, my God, the Rams. Well, for years, we always said they were good field, no hit, meaning their defense was terrific, but they couldn't score on offense. Add Sean McVay in as the new head coach, and they have opened it up in a huge way. An absolute offensive juggernaut. They're leading the league in scoring. On first down at Stafford. Ebron's got it. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. From the 50 at Stafford. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. So the sack on first down there by the defense, and now it's second down. A shotgun snap for Stafford, and that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one who has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. The Lions on third down, two for five to this point. This is third down and 12. To throw is Stafford. It's brought in left side by Tate. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. One hallmark of good defenses it's understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Sam Martin now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And now a high kick here as he'll try to hang it up there. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. 
So we've reached halftime here on Halloween. And trust me, kids, if you had to look at Charles Davis every game, you'd think every day was Halloween. As we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando, where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. All right, Brandon, back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get you caught up on all the highlights from the first half. Both the Packers and the Lions are having some trouble moving the ball through the air. The yardage totals are low, and that's helped play into what was a low-scoring first half. Here we go. Let's do this. Here's your first half highlights. Third down from inside the 50. Stafford's on point with the throw, and he ends up at the 24-yard line before he stopped on the play. Lions now later on the drive. Reddick's going to use a stiff arm to get away, and he kept off the long drive with the TD as they take a 7-0 lead. Now first and 10, defense will win the battle and get the sack. This will go for a loss of 8. We're set up for a great second half, so let's get you out to it. Here's Brandon Guyton. All right, thank you, Larry. Plenty of intrigue to come. A one-point game as we get set for half two. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This one fielded at the five. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk? when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission. Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. The second half starts with a carry by Jones. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Here we go. One, they go play action here on first down. Let's it fly deep for Cobb. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referees. Offense. So they say no to the penalty. The incompletion stands. It'll be second and ten. And what they want to do is go ahead and take those downs away from them. You never want to give extra snaps to any offense. That's how you get hurt. Offense still needing ten yards. Second down. Oh, 
Throwing Hundley. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Randall Cobb, the intended receiver. And it'll bring up third down. Well, pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? He'll look to throw. He's got Adams on the hookup. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. And a nice gain of 21 yards. We always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Shows some confidence, supreme confidence. Big time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did. going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? A give to Jones. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. And here comes play number six on this drive. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. <laughs> a big hit. Knocked down sideways right around the 26. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. The Packers on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and nine. They'll set up a throw. Pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back at the 33-yard line. Akeem Spence with a big-time sack on third down, and it'll be a loss of seven. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique, except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. Now Mason Crosby for the Packers field goal try. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, close game, second half. You obviously hate to leave three out on the field. Especially in a game like this when you know points are hard to come by. That was one of their best opportunities so far. And they come away with nothing. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. 
And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. After the missed kick, they're in really good position. They'll begin this drive at the 39 now. On first down, Abdullah. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. They had a great read there from his free safety position. And, Charles, you know with those guys, it's all about their eyes. They have to be laser-focused. Yeah, I had to fake my way through it when I was playing, but now I can see exactly what they're doing. And on that play, he obviously had no presence to feel like he's being pushed for a pass. And without that, that allowed him to get up to the line of scrimmage and hold him to no gain. Here's Stafford now on second down. This is screen to Abdullah. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. So here we go, first and 10 now. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through, and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. Here's Reddit. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Only a yard in the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. The Lions on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and nine. Out of the gun, Stafford. Looking downfield for Jones. And a shot taken on third down, unsuccessful. Fourth down now. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And I hate to point to that missed field goal from their last drive, but you look at the scoreboard, they would be in the lead if they had that three. But no doubt those points or those missed points do loom large. But here they're getting a chance for a makeup, aren't they? Almost like my time in school, I was always begging my teachers for a makeup exam. Here's their opportunity now to put those points on the board. And every point becoming more vital here in the second half. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Let's go! 
the shotgun. He'll look to throw toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. They always say the real estate is about location. Well, guess what? When it's a slant route, the quick ones, timing, timing, timing. Got to be able to lead your man with the football. And the timing off right there. Threw it behind him. The Packers on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This will be third and six. Here we go. One, two, three. They'll look to throw here. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. 15 yards through the air and a first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe-tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. Fresh set of downs here. Jones. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Second down following the run. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard. Maybe from you. I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. the gun now on third down finds his target Montgomery and he gets it to the 32 good enough for a first down he got 18 yards out of that one and it gets him a new set of downs and this is why trying to cover the angle route is so difficult that anyone playing the linebacker position when they see a running back out of the backfield widen because he heads towards the flat first oftentimes you widen too much and overcommit. he cuts up inside and this is what we saw there. A nice pickup for a first down. And here comes play number six on this drive. Now a play fake here on first down. The swing pass caught. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown Packers. Jordy Nelson, 32 yards. And the Packers are able to cash in for six. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through, and that's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. And he is going to go down, back at the 11-yard line. So tried to throw it in for two points, but the D got home, brought him down. Yeah, got home, which means there had to be good coverage. Just had nowhere to go with the ball. Typically, you try and throw quick hitters, quick slants, you know, maybe even a quick fade. Nothing was open. He ends up getting sacked. Crosby on now to kick it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And Detroit getting set to go now. 
These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Now a first down throw, Stafford. Fells has it, left side. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. So second down, three yards to go now. Now Stafford. Now they go screen. It's complete. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid gain. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Stafford gives to Abdullah. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Now Stafford hands to Adula. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. Stafford on first down. And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack back at the 47-yard line. Mike Daniels able to drop him for a loss of four. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. And a long way to go for the offense here on second down. From the gun, here's Stafford. And his throw is incomplete. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. Just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. The Lions on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and 14. Operating from the gun, Stafford. And this is going to be incomplete. Now we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off.
Here's Sam Martin now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. And now a high kick here as they'll try to cover this one. So that'll be marked down as a 19-yard punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. down carry so it's second and nine this is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game it's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people hard to get them started again occasionally Let's go. out of the pistol to give to Jones <laughs> And he'll work this one up to about the 38. And he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. The Packers on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This time they face a third and two. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Lambeau. It's Packer football here as they've got the lead as well to begin the fourth quarter. And the Lions going with an extra DB here on third down. Watch right, watch right, watch right, watch right. Come on, let's go. They'll try and run for it with Jones. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Do my eyes deceive me or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? First seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. They're going to look to throw. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Devontae Adams, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. A little too much oomph. Too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. His throw incomplete. The new acquisition, Martellus Bennett, the intended target. And it's third down. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. the play fake he'll look to throw and under the Lions pressure he's brought down the amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary let's just face it this offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush it's been demonstrated time and time again
On now is the Packers punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. Now a high kick, almost a pooch punt. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. First and ten, Stafford. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it to T.J. Jones that time. That'll bring up second down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Back to the air, Stafford on second down. No, he doesn't have it. Maybe some alligator arms there going over the middle. Third down. In the early days of the NFL, you could easily blame these drops on maybe some uneven or uncertain lighting in a stadium. Not anymore. The lights are pretty good. Yeah, they're great here at night, but his second drop indeed, not a good look. The Lions on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and ten. Now it's Stafford. This is Riddick on the screen. He's got the first down and more past midfield. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Second down following the incompletion. From the pistol, they'll run with Abdullah. And he won't get much. Maybe a couple down inside the 35 to the 34. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Throwing on third down, Stafford. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. And here comes play number six on this drive. They'll try to run it in with Abdullah. 
And he'll take this one inside the 10 down to the 8. That gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. On second down, here's Stafford. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. And since the penalty occurred in the end zone, move the ball to the one-yard line. First and goal from the one-yard line. Costly penalty. A fresh set of downs, and they're at the one. First and goal. Now whistles and a flag down. Looked like one of the Lions linemen might have moved. Offense. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. First and goal, defense with their backs against the wall. Now again, this is Abdullah. And he will not only not get the yard he needed, he goes the wrong direction. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. So second and goal here from the nine. Now Riddick. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here? Not even a thought, is yeah, it? defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. This offense, two for two on third downs on this drive. This is the most important of them all, third and goal. Back to throw, Stafford. And he's unable to haul it in, so it falls incomplete over the middle third of the field, and that brings up fourth. And a tough spot to drop that down here, third and goal. And so many times when you analyze a play like this, you talk about the people around him and maybe his focus was gone. Sometimes just simply him understanding how close he is to the end zone and a chance to score, and he tightens up and doesn't complete the play. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. All right, so this one's now back within a field goal. And if anybody tells you they see how this one's going to end, I'd have to say they're probably lying, Charles. And this game's had more twists and turns than a good mystery novel. And I have a feeling we've got a few more twists and turns in store for us before they shake hands here. Now it's Martin to do the honors after the made field goal. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. 
as they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Caught left side by Cobb. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Second down now after the pass completion. Throwing, Hundler. Over the middle, that's caught by Adams. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. Now the offense lining up first and 10. throw a dump underneath the Jones and he'll go down right around the 47 this time it'll be a gain of eight yards and it'll be second down I know most of the time when the ball's in the air you're thinking wide receiver tight end but running backs they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays And some options here for the offense on second and two. Strong left, strong left, strong left. Here we go. One, now Jones. And some room to run now. And he's brought down. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. I think this defense tired of seeing him run the football on this D-line. Probably getting sick of the O-line as well. And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking about a conversation I had with Adam Gase, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins in the offseason. He told me that he asks his running backs each week for their favorite runs. Give me your three top runs. And right now, you're seeing a guy that's probably using his top runs to great advantage in this game. He is in a zone. Back to the ground, this time Montgomery. And he's got some space here. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing, in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from, or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. down they run again here's Montgomery and he'll be dropped at the 23 after a pickup of about four offensively with the lead you want to run the ball keep the clock going but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too right so how do you do that and not come back on your heels now think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this where they describe the scenario tell you what they're looking for and make sure that they're still attacking Yet at the same time, not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. And that is incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree 
as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And this one, a 41-yard attempt. And this is going to be no good. He misses it off to the left, and this score will stay right where it is. So the folks on hand here growing a little restless with their kicking game. That's now two misses so far. And in a tight game, fourth quarter, the fans are the only ones getting restless, Brandon. There were a few looks of disbelief on that sideline as well. And Detroit getting set to go now. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They go play action here on first down. Ebron caught left side. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. the gun Stafford and that is incomplete here he was waving his arms won the football but he dropped it and that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee we don't need to mention the other guy's name but when he dropped an open pass that you blew coverage on what'd you say to it yeah it's really not right since I blew coverage <laughs> but since he dropped the pass I said well maybe next time he'll just walk it out here and hand it to you would that be easier he wasn't that's, real th he wasn't real thrilled with that that's cold-blooded <laughs> cold-blooded one of the bigger plays in the game thus far the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down well Stafford Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. <laughs> and the athleticism on this spin move allows him to pick up the first before he's brought down. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. That's exactly what Detroit wants to do with Theo Riddick. Find a way to get him the ball on third down out of the backfield. Man's got excellent hands. The numbers bear that out. Two years ago, led all running backs with 80 catches. Ten games last year, 53 catches. Stafford. This is screen to Abdullah. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Got to give some credit there defensively. They snuffed out that screen early on first down. Really read it well, didn't they? Because they didn't bring the pressure that they expected. They covered all the passing lanes. So once you see it break down as the passer, I think in this situation, you're throwing it at the feet of your back to make sure no one picks it off, or you throw it away, throw it over the sideline. Don't try and freelance and try and make a bigger play. There's really no one else running a pattern that should be open. So this offense really needs to make something happen here late in the fourth with the football. To the air again, Stafford. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. They get seven there on the screen. It'll set up a third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way.
One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Stafford looks to throw again. And he connects with Ebron. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Stafford finding his big tight end Ebron for a lion first down. And here comes play number six on this drive. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So the Lions in possession of the football as we welcome you back. They come up on a first and 10, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. So the offense has it first and 10. They try the right side with Abdullah. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. He's back to throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Eric Ebron, the big tight end, is intended target. And it's third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here. That looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Now whistles and a flag down. Looked like one of the Lions linemen might have moved. That's going to set him back five yards. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. Back to throw. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it was real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. Back to throw. Yeah, that is incomplete, but there is a flag. And on fourth down, this is a big call. So the defense helping him out a little bit here late in the fourth. Yeah, and you're exactly right. And when you're the one doing the chasing, you'll take a little help from the other guys, won't you? Now this will be the ninth play on this drive. And now whistles here and a flag down. Looked like someone got going a little early. Offense. So that'll back him up five. Riddick with a carry. 
And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. And now a timeout coming from the defensive side for the Packers. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. It's a doula. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. And Alan Packer is going to take another timeout. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. It looks like the Packers have added an extra DB on third down. They hand off to their big tight end. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This for the lead in the final stages. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And with a little over a minute to play, they have taken the lead. Uh, now then, it's a big kick right there to give them the lead in the fourth. But, Charles, there is still time left for a final drive. Brandon, you know they would have liked to take the clock down just a little bit further, at least under a minute or so. But this was not over yet, especially since they just need a field goal. It's Martin to do the honors after the made field goal. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Packers get set to go. They're only in need of a field goal, a decent amount of time on the clock. So tell me if I'm wrong. You don't have to be too panicked here. No, not at all. I agree with you. And this is where your preparation and your confidence comes into play. They've worked on these situations. Yeah, they practice this all the time. Oh, they practice they? it all the time. They know what they want to get done. And in a lot of cases, the great competitors, they love this situation. They think they can go ahead and get it done. They practiced it. We'll see if practice makes perfect. Here we go. Brand 38. Brand 38. He'll look to throw. Drops it to Jones in the flat. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A good pick up there, a 22. First down now, but that clock rolling. They'll look to throw. He gets it over the middle to Cobb. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. And with the clock ticking under 50 seconds now, he spikes it.
Looks like a nickel set here defensively on third and two. Yeah, maybe expecting a throw. Now Hundley. And some room to maneuver. And a gain there of 11 yards. to throw. That's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all. And now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. In the red zone this time. Here we go. Red 98. Red 98. Following the penalty, Montgomery. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Credit him with a one yard gain there to make it second and nine. All right, my man, this is now where it's risk-reward because on defense, you've got to crowd the line of scrimmage. You've got to get in all the gaps, get up tight on everyone, and try and force the field goal attempt here. You can't let them break one big, but you know something when you crowd the line of scrimmage? If they do pop one, it's going to go Yeah, as you say, could take it to the house, but the magnitude of this possible upcoming field goal, every yard counts. Well, Charles, exciting to the very end. That's what we just saw in this game. Final play there, had it in the red zone, but when anytime you're outside of the 10, that's tough. Try to draw the final play to get in, and they couldn't do it. It certainly is. So what they were looking for was, you know, extra time. Too bad it's not FIFA soccer, right, where you get a little bit of extra, and you get a chance to run a couple more plays and maybe get closer and take that last shot into the end zone. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gawton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. From Lambeau, good night, everybody.